Welcome to Get the Balance Right, a podcast for female entrepreneurs looking for a quirky spin on business. I'm your host, Heather Zeitzwolf, CPA and profitability coach. I'm a longtime vegan, Gen Xer, cat mom, drag queen enthusiast, and collector of weird dolls and lunchboxes. If you want kick ass information that includes zany commentary and a dab of woo woo, then you've come to the right place. I want to help you build a business based on your passion and authentic voice. Are you ready to take control of your finances so you can earn, keep, and grow the money you deserve? If you're a solo entrepreneur that isn't afraid to do things scrappy, then roll up your sleeves and let's get the balance right. Hey, peeps, I've got a question for you. Have you been looking for some thing that you could do to gain more visibility and credibility? What about a low cost way to market yourself? What about speaking in front of an audience that is extremely targeted and you can super, super niche down? What about getting engagement from your followers? And what about building a relationship with potential clients and current clients? Well, Clubhouse checks off all these boxes. Now you might be thinking, uh, Clubhouse, that's so like a year ago. Yeah, I know. It was really popular during the pandemic. Uh, we're sort of still in that. But it has changed quite a bit. But if you have used Clubhouse in the past and kind of gave up on it, you thought it was like maybe a waste of time or you just weren't seeing the results that you wanted from it, I urge you to listen to this podcast and give it another whirl. Now, if you've never used Clubhouse before, I did an introduction to Clubhouse way back on episode 41, where I talked to Amber Hawley. And that particular podcast episode is all about shiny object syndrome. And at the time, Clubhouse was my shiny object. Now, Clubhouse has changed quite a bit. This is episode 90. That was episode 41. So you know how technology is. It changes all the time. Now, if you haven't been on the platform for a while, you really need to check out these new bells and whistles that have been rolled out. If you've never tried Clubhouse before, download the app and give it a whirl. And if you are like, I don't really know what I'm going to do on this thing. I don't understand it. I've never heard of Clubhouse. Uh, people are telling me I should be on Clubhouse, but I'm like, I don't want to be on another social media platform or, oh, another social media platform. I know, I get it. What I would urge you to do is, if you know somebody that has a Clubhouse event that you can go to and check it out, I urge you to do that. And I'm going to be speaking on Clubhouse quite a bit more than I am now. So, you know, hit me up in my DMs on Instagram and find out when I'm going to be on Clubhouse. And I'd love for you to join the room because the greatest thing about Clubhouse is that it allows for this human connection. Even though we're not actually seeing each other, it's really funny how like sound can be very intimate because there's not that visual element. People tend to be a little less nervous. They are not worried about the way that they look when they're talking. It's very interesting how people can be more comfortable doing audio. And also, you don't have to wear any makeup. You can wear yoga pants and be presenting. I mean, how often can you do that? This intro may sound a little bit different. And that's because I'm recording in a motel in California. I don't have an actual microphone. I'm recording this directly on my laptop, and I tried using my earbuds last night, but all of the recordings came out glitchy. It was really weird. I'm in a different location now. I was in Los Angeles, so there was a lot of street noise and all of that going on. But right now, I'm actually in Manhattan Beach, and that sounds really fancy, doesn't it? Actually, I'm in a very cheap motel. I guess I haven't told you who I am yet. So if you're new to the podcast, welcome. I'm Heather Zeitzwolf, the host of Get the Balance Right podcast. I'm so excited that you're here today. And I'm in California because I came down here for Podcast Movement Evolutions, 
I came to meet other podcasters and people in production. And it was really a lot of fun. But the best thing about it was the human connections that I made. Now, I tend to go to conferences to learn. I mean, that's usually like one of the key things. I'm always the one in the front row with my notebook. But I found myself during this conference spending more time in the hallways, meeting people and getting to know the people that I've met virtually over the last couple of years. I got to actually see them in person, give them hugs, talk to them. It was really a lot of fun. And what's great about Clubhouse is that it's like going to a conference, except for you don't have to leave your house, but you can make the same human connections with people on Clubhouse just like you can do going to a live conference. Clubhouse is all about relationships, building relationships. Sure, you can do a Zoom webinar with your potential clients and your clients, but Clubhouse is one of those things where you just never know who might pop into the room. And because you can make it so niche and you can just change things on the fly, you can decide, you know, you want to do something on a Tuesday and it's Sunday. You can just do that. It's easier to get people to show up than it would be if you had a webinar and then you might have to have mailings and send them emails and all of that. So I really want you to start to consider Clubhouse. Now, my guest today is Rita Goodrow. I met her at She Podcast. So she's a podcaster. She's a business coach as well. And her podcast is called The Rita Made Me Do It Show. And she explains where that name comes from in this interview. I love her podcast. Now, I didn't know anything about her podcast until I met her at She Podcast. And I can tell you, it is definitely one of the best business podcasts. And I was so excited that she said yes to this interview. She is doing really, really well on Clubhouse. She utilizes it, I think, maybe like twice a week. And it has impacted her business in an extremely positive way. And in this interview, we talk all about relationship marketing and relationship selling. And that's really where sales is going. I think there's this trend that's kind of going away from like, I sell you a course and I'm completely hands off and I don't have any interaction with you. You just buy this course and work on it yourself. So there's no like real relationship with this person. You know, courses are great and the courses can also be a hybrid. They can be mixed with one-on-one coaching that can be part of a group program. But what I'm getting at is that people are dying for human connection. Now, again, this is partly because of the pandemic. We've all been cooped up in our houses. And, you know, a lot of us have Zoom fatigue. I personally don't. I don't mind being on Zoom. It gives me a chance to actually see people when I talk to them. But a lot of people do have Zoom fatigue. And so Clubhouse is a different way of getting to know people and allowing people to come into your circle and then you can serve them. And plus, Clubhouse is just fun and there's all kinds of things on there. So what I urge you to do is take a listen to this podcast, this episode. And if you don't know anything about Rita Goodrow, please check out her podcast. Rita made me do it. There's links in the show notes if you're interested in her group programs or her regular programs. And she talks all about relationship selling. All right, peeps. I just wanted to let you guys know that this is the very last podcast in my series, Stepping Into Your Authenticity. And you may know that I went live for 45 days in a row on Instagram. And that was part of this whole series. So those are still on Instagram if you want to go check out those videos. I did a lot of interviews with people. They were really, really fun. And I found from this whole practice of stepping into my authenticity that I actually really like going live. I was totally afraid of it. I thought, oh my God, what's going to happen? No one's going to show up. I'm going to make a fool of myself. I'll look stupid, blah, 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 blah. All the things that you tell yourself, but it was really, really fun. So I'm definitely going to be doing more lives. This is the last one of the series. The next series that I'm doing is passion to profits. It might have a slightly different name to it, but it's passion to profits. And this series is a companion piece to my new group program that's coming out very soon. So if you're interested in working with me, please sign up for the group program. And if you're not really sure about it, set up a discovery call with me and let's just chat about it because 
this thing is going to change your life and change your business. So I hope that you sign up for it. There's two groups. And depending on when you're listening to this, I'm going to roll out more of these later on in the year. It's Passion to Profits Roadmap Group Program. So you get a whole roadmap. It's going to be so good. Please set up a discovery call with me if you want to learn more. You can go to my website, getthebalanceright.net, and check out more information on it. And there's also links in the show notes. I just want to say one last thing about Clubhouse. Clubhouse has actually changed my life. Now, I have talked about this a little bit on the show, and I've met some people through Clubhouse that I've become really good friends with. And in fact, one person, shout out to Stephanie Mojica. I hung out with her today in California. We met through Clubhouse. So there you go. I made a real human connection. We even gave each other hugs. It was really cool. And she's been on my podcast and she did a live with me. So it was super fun to meet her in person. Of course, I forgot to take a picture of us. That's I always forget to take pictures of people. Ah. I also met Chris McPeak. Shout out to Chris McPeak. She was on my show as well. She talked about side hustles and Stephanie talked about writing your book as a business person. And Chris and I got to hang out and I originally met her through Clubhouse and then got into her circle with other podcasters. And so you can make real human connections and real friends on Clubhouse. And keep in mind that, you know, so much of building a business is around networking and referrals and Clubhouse can help you support that. So it's not just about going on there and selling. That's not it. It really is about human connection and building relationships with people. And that is the future for sales. All right, folks, here is my interview with Rita Goodrow from the Rita Made Me Do It podcast. She's so smart and sassy and funny. And she was a lawyer. So, you know, she's smart. She's smarty pants, but super down to earth, very funny. And I absolutely adore her podcast. So you got to check it out. All right. Here is my interview with Rita Goodrow. Rita Goodrow, welcome to Get the Balance Right podcast. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Oh, I am so excited. I really have been enjoying your podcast. Besides being a really awesome person, super flexible on this. <laughs> Tell us about yourself. Who are you? Tell us about your podcast and and what you have to offer. I'm Rita Goodrow. I'm a business strategist, a former lawyer turned dating coach and from date coaching became a business strategist. My podcast is called The Rita Made Me Do It Show. My business name is Rita Made Me Do It LLC. And the reason that my business is named that is I like to get my clients to take action. I'm about learning through implementation, learning by taking action, not talking about it, but doing it and doing it until finally we figure out everything that works. One day I had a client do a Facebook Live and it was her first Facebook Live video. And she came online and she was like, I've never done a Facebook Live before, but Rita made me do it. And then all of my clients started using like, and even community members, non-clients started using the hashtag Rita made me do it. And I was like, there's something here. So I immediately went to the state corporation commission online, changed my business name to Rita Made Me Do It LLC, and then got the trademark on it. And it's just been Rita Made Me Do It ever since. I love that. That is so cool. I've been a fan. I've been binging on the show and you have so much good stuff in there. You started off as a lawyer, then you became a dating coach. How'd you find out so much about business? How'd you get so good at this? <laughs> I, I have no idea because when I was born, no, like when I was growing up as a kid, I wanted to be a solid gold dancer, right? An entertainer. So I, that's where my head was at. And then the show got canceled. But my whole family was like, you should be a lawyer because you talk a lot, you debate a lot, you argue a lot, you should be a lawyer. So I just kind of like academically followed that path, right? I went to school for poli sci and then I went on to law school and I just really followed that path because that's what's all had always been told to me. I guess without realizing it, I had always kind of had 
some kind of entrepreneurial like bug. I volunteered to lead things all the time. I was like the leader of my church youth group started a newspaper. Like I was always looking for things to lead, to do, clubs to be in, all of that. When I got to law school, I just heads down, like did what I was supposed to do, did the whole thing. I was a lawyer that worked 80 hours a week or whatever, but I was still a person in the world and I was a single person in the world. I started a singles group for fun, a meetup group. This is back when meetup was like newish still and like really popular. And I started a singles group and I called it singles in the suburbs. And it was located outside of Washington, DC. Cause we live far where I live in Northern Virginia. We're close to the city, but we're far enough away that in traffic, you're not going to the city for anything. All the events for singles were in the city. And I was so bitter one night. It was like 3 a.m. I was so bitter. And I was like, I am starting a group for singles and I'm calling it singles in the suburbs in your 30s because I was especially bitter. But I was like singles in the suburbs and 100 people by the end of that month had come out to events and it grew to be the largest singles group in the D.C. area. It was five years that I mainly ran the group. That's where I think I really, really learned sales marketing. I I knew it before because during my law career, I had a stint where I was a solo lawyer, kind of rain making and getting my own clients. And, but I was young. I knew what I was doing, but I didn't really. So by the time I started leading the singles group, I knew what not to do and then built a business without realizing I had built a business in the singles group. But when I became a dating coach, I just kind of kept some of the things that I learned from running the singles group, hired a business coach, of course, so I could learn the things I didn't know and have my business law background. And I think all of that combined really nicely, which is why I built that business very quickly. And by the end of the first year, transitioning full-time into business coaching, because so many people asked me what I had done to grow my date coaching business. And so for like eight years now, I've just been helping people grow their businesses. You seem like such a natural. Maybe it's the lawyer training, kind of get into all the little nooks and crannies of what's going on. You've been really rocking it on Clubhouse. Why did you get into Clubhouse in the first place? One of the things that I help my clients with is really coming up with what I call their all-in strategy, which is instead of trying to do everything, really understand where your strength, skills, talents, and time is best utilized to grow your business. And I, I kind of divide that up following like the standard map of how somebody becomes a client. So like building awareness is one of the phases, you know, building the, the trust in the relationship is another phase. Selling is another phase, right? Well, for me, I knew hands down a long time ago, speaking is the number one way for me to build awareness in my business, speaking to groups, associations, organizations, my own speaking opportunities. And then this audio only platform, Clubhouse came along and I wasn't on it right away, but I started hearing about the buzz. And then I finally told my friend, fine, go ahead and invite me. And the minute that I was on it, I knew it was the right tool for me because I knew I had already committed to all forms of speaking being one of the main ways to grow my business. If writing was the main way to grow my business, I would advise a client, you probably don't want to be spending your time on Clubhouse. I think it's knowing where are my skills and then knowing what you're trying to accomplish with it, where it's fitting into your business model. And so for me, I knew it was the right platform for what I was trying to do with it for growing my business. If someone wanted to start utilizing Clubhouse as a forum for speaking, they want more opportunities to speak, would you still suggest Clubhouse? As well? Yeah, I do. I think Clubhouse is a really great platform. I think, I mean, and you even said this is part of a series really about authenticity, right? Where people succeed on Clubhouse is when they're looking at it as a relationship building tool over a sales tool. And that's really how I teach sales is through relationship selling as opposed to transactional selling, which sounds almost like the same thing, but it's majorly different with relationships being more important than the price, the item you're selling, the thing you're selling, the logistics behind it. So if you're looking to really build relationships that build trust and credibility and go deep in connection, then Clubhouse is going to be right for you on a variety of levels, whether you're speaking on a stage and providing value or you're participating in other people's rooms or just supporting other people or however you show up. It's a great tool all the way around for connection, authentic relationship building. And that has to be the foundation of sales. If that's not the foundation of sales, 
You can be successful in the short term, but it won't be sustainable. You're always going to feel like you have to chase, chase, chase. And so Clubhouse is great, but you have to be committed to truly connecting the way you would in person. You can't treat the app differently than you would sitting around a table or going into a conference. Yeah. And I have made some incredible connections through Clubhouse. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that you can hook it up to Instagram. So you can start to follow somebody right away and then you can send them a message. I mean, Clubhouse now has messages. They keep changing things. They got a lot of more bells and whistles. You mentioned the whole thing about this real connection. I've been in rooms where somebody comes in, they get to go up on stage, and then suddenly they just like do a spiel about their company and then they suddenly leave. Like, uh, yeah. Those people are, that. that's not what Clubhouse is about. No, I equate that. This is exactly what I mean by, would you do that in person, right? And I say, like, imagine that you just go, you're going to like a networking lunch and you walk into the networking, everybody's sitting around tables. You walk in into the lunchroom and you just st- suddenly, sc- I'm holding lipstick in my hand. I don't know why, but like <laughs> you suddenly scream, I have lipstick, I sell lipstick. Here's everything about my lipstick. And then you throw the lipstick and you turn and you run out of the room. Like people would look at you (laughs) like you're bonkers, right? But that's what people do on Facebook groups and some people on Clubhouse. And so so think about like how people would react to that if you did that in a room, (laughs) like a real in-person room, right? That's not gonna build trust or a relationship or any kind of connection. It might grab attention, but it's not going to lead to the results that you want, right? People aren't chasing you out of the room to go like talk to you more. And so that's why that, that strategy fails everywhere, but especially on clubhouse, people are going to stick around in the room that they're in to listen to the other people who are really having like meaningful conversations. They can't see where you've gone next and they're not going to bother to, to try to find you if you treat it like that. So If we want to use Clubhouse effectively, we're not that jerk that comes in and talks about their lipstick and then leaves the room. (laughs) I don't even understand how that would even be effective for them anyways. But if we want to start off on Clubhouse, maybe we don't have a following already. Do you have a suggestion as far as getting your feet wet, like getting to know other people who have rooms and have an approach that you've used for yourself or your clients? I think that it's important that you participate in other people's rooms. I disagree with people who say you have to wait to run your own conversations and rooms until you've participated in a lot of other people's rooms. I actually think they should work in parallel. If you're actively on Clubhouse, you need to be active on Clubhouse. That means listening and raising your hand, contributing to the conversation. I I do think you need to be building your following. It's like give and take, right? So what you put out into the world flows back in. So if you're showing up and participating and, and, and uh, supporting other people and helping make their conversations really great, making them look good while they're having conversations and making their discussion look really good um, and ha- helping their whole audience have a great experience, other people in turn are going to want to end up doing that for you. And I don't mean like a tip for tat, but at the same time, get in there and start leading your own rooms, find a conversation or have a casual conversation starter, just a meet and greet room or something like that. So you start getting comfortable with getting uncomfortable because that's the place most people are going to feel uncomfortable. And the quicker you can get over that, the more you're going to keep showing up to do it. And the two will grow simultaneously. You're building relationships from supporting, but then you have a place for people to come and support you real time. And it'll start at one level and it'll keep growing and growing and growing. But when it comes to starting a room on Clubhouse, guys, I'm going to give you my tip. If you have zero following or little following or whatever, pick the day, pick the time, decide how long this conversation is going to be, 30 minutes or an hour or whatever. Go into the room and commit to stay in the room the entire time you had determined to do it. That's what I did at the beginning. If I had a one hour room and 10 minutes into it, nobody came into the room, I'm still not closing out that room. I might sit in silence, 
but I'm going to sit there for the whole hour. I might work on something. I want to be there when somebody hops into the room. And even if like one or two or no people show up, if I do it again the next week at the same time and the next week at the same time, eventually people are going to recognize me in the hallway. They're going to see that title there. They're going to get curious. They're going to hop in and it'll grow and it'll grow. So don't make the commitment to do a room, hop in five minutes later, go, well, nobody came. I guess this isn't working and close out the room. Show up as a person who gets the results that they want. And a person who gets results would make a commitment, show up and see the commitment through. I think the sooner you just start doing that and getting comfortable with that, the easier Clubhouse will be overall. I love that idea of keeping it open. And, you know, you can also invite a buddy. And now they have the replay feature. You could have something prepared. And if no one shows up, it turns more into like a podcast teaching moment. Carve out that time And then don't bail on it because it's the visual, the seeing you over and over again that will start building trust in you without you even realizing it because you're consistent. You show up. I see your name there. I see you leading this conversation. Like I see it again and again. I'm going to be like, wow. And I won't even realize that I'm building that trust in you that I really am like, but I am like subconsciously. It's like, I can trust her. She's consistent. She's going to show up. And I just take that on because I see that happening right through your actions. Sometimes when you're in a room and there's only a few people in there, that's almost better because then you actually get more one-on-one contact with somebody. You don't have to have a giant room to to make it effective. On your podcast, you talk a lot about stepping into this, like being uncomfortable, like allowing yourself to be uncomfortable so that you can actually do greater things in your business. And Clubhouse, like you said, it could be uncomfortable. We just got to do it. And I think part of showing up authentically is doing it over and over again. Those nerves will go away and the real you will come forward. Yeah. One other thing I really love about Clubhouse is that these rooms are very targeted. You can find your target market pretty easily. Do you have any suggestions on finding clubs or making your own clubs? They have such great search features now that you can search keywords, you can search for actual like topics, right? Rooms are now tagged with topics. So you can find the clubs and the rooms that talk about the kinds of things that you want to talk about. But also as a business owner, think about what your audience wants to talk about. So sometimes it's like, well, I would want to go into a room about X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, cool. But would your potential clients and customers want to go into a room about X, Y, and Z? Maybe yes. And maybe no. And if yes, then cool. You get to listen to something that also like is going to benefit your business overall, right? But if not, start finding the conversations and the places that are grabbing the attention of your target market. Because number one, if you participate in those conversations, you're going to be participating in front of people who could be ideal clients. But also if you listen that's great market research. You're going to learn what questions are they asking? What language are they using? What is important to them? Like how engaged are they in this? Like, where did this room come from? And then look at the rooms that your ideal clients are starting too. There are all kinds of things that you can do to find places and spaces, but really the search features are incredible. Use them and just start showing up. It's also who you follow because you see the conversations from the people that you follow in Clubhouse. Follow people that maybe you're not in their networks already. You wouldn't come across them other ways or other places. Sometimes people follow the same exact people, platform after platform after platform, which is okay, but you're really missing the boat in Clubhouse if you if you do that. Instead, if you want to be exposed to new conversations, new people, new places, then just search and follow people you don't know so you can see what starts popping up in your hallway. You can always remove somebody if the things you see aren't great. And it really is about getting out of your comfort zone overall. I think on Clubhouse in terms of who you're talking to, the conversations you're sitting in and the way that you're using the app, it's a little different than other social media platforms. Make sure you have a really great bio too, because when you follow someone, for the most part, they're going to click on your face to see who are you? Why did you follow me? Especially at the beginning. Who are you? Why did you follow me? And you want those first few sentences of your bio to engage them and intrigue them enough that they want to either read more or follow you back so that they can learn more about you, right? Or at least it's memorable enough that if you keep showing up in their places and spaces, they're gonna go, oh yeah, there's Rita again. If you add value and and you connect, they're gonna follow you. Don't sleep on the bio and don't make that so generic. Make it intriguing so people really wanna learn. It's always about engaging curiosity in everything that you do, in your bio, in 
the questions that you're asking in the conversation? Like, are you engaging people's curiosity? Because that's what makes them want to engage if they're curious. And so how can I get them curious about me? Yeah, I love that. And the bio is one of those things where I've seen like people have like lots of emojis or they have different spaces. And it seems like it's kind of evolved over time. A little bit. I mean, the emojis to their credit are searchable. So you could put a plane in and search and see everybody who has a plane. And maybe those are all the travelers and you want to find like travel clubs and stuff. So you can do that, but like make it simple and easy for people to read and understand, but also don't tell them everything in the first sentence or two. Like you really have to tell the most important thing that makes them want to go, well, I want to know more. Like, well, what else or why or how? When you participate in a conversation, the best people do this. They they are skilled at this. If you go into somebody else's room, like I'm using me as an example, you don't have to do this in my room. But if you go into my room and then you come up and you ask a question that allows me to look good in front of my audience, right? So maybe I'm running a room. I used to run a room on professional speaking. And I remember this guy, James, he's still one of my really great friends. And the reason why I even paid attention to him in the first place was he came in and raised his hand to come on stage. And I noticed he is a professional speaker. And I was like, up. Oh, two things can happen. One is it's going to be really good or the other is he's just here to take over and to be like, look at me, I'm an expert. Look at me. I also know this. Look at me, look at me when, you know, I'm running the room about this topic, but that's not what he did. He came up and he asked a question that he knew would make me look good by answering it. So he's like, Rita, I'm curious. What do you think about X, Y, and Z? He knew it would give value to the audience and he knew that it would position me the way that I wanted to be positioned in front of my audience, right? That made him memorable. That made me curious about him. That made me want to get to know him more. If he had just come up and said, I'm also an expert in this and here are my tips and my suggestions, that might've been great, but it wouldn't have made me curious about him. That's what I mean oh, by yeah. giving value. It doesn't have to be information. It's, are you like making the person, whoever that person is curious to go, who is this person? Like, oh my gosh, I have to learn more about them. Yeah. I've been in rooms where I've co-modded and you also want to do that as a co-mod as well. You don't want to be like this person that's like trying to one up somebody. That's just jerky behavior anyways. Yeah. Do you have any tips being authentic with your avatar? Like some people have strange avatars that aren't really their personality. Do you have any tips on the avatar? You're talking about the the profile photo? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that it's really important that you can see your face in the photo. Like, I don't want to talk to a logo. I don't want to talk to like a cartoon cat. I don't want to talk, unless you're in clubs and spaces where that is the norm, like Bitcoin, right? They have like the cryptocurrency, the lasers shooting out of the eyes or whatever it is, right? Your NFTs or your whatever, fine, cool. People know what that is and recognize it, right? And it creates a community. But for the most part, if you're just a person on the platform, people build relationships with people. They don't build relationships with cats and they don't build relationships with cartoon characters and they don't build relationships with logos. They want to trust you. Remember, it's you're connecting with a person. So make it easy for them to like see your face. You don't have to like do anything specific with your face, but just have people like go again, like, Oh, that's, it matches with what I'm hearing. The personality, the energy, the whatever that I'm hearing, this photo makes sense to me, right? Because that's also a piece of building trust that happens subtly and not like overtly is like, is this person the same in all the places, right? Whether it's photos or a platform or on stage or when I meet you at an in-person event or whatever, like I need your brand, your personal self to be consistent everywhere. If I feel disconnects, like you're one way on stage, but you're another in person, but you're another on this platform and you're, uh, that's going to ruin the trust without me even realizing that I don't trust you. People that are moderators, they're on the stage and they don't want to let somebody up that could be a bot or they could be a troll or something. So they are going to not only look at your picture, but they're going to probably click on your bio, like you're mentioning, make sure that you're legit before they let you come to the stage. Before they let you come up in my morning room. One thing I say is anybody's free to come up and participate, but we do ask that you at least have something in your bio or a legitimate 
Instagram account that we can verify that you're a true person who really wants to come up and engage in conversation. Unfortunately, it's just like any other platform. They're going to be the spammers and the bots and the, the things that cause problems. But what I love about Clubhouse too, is it makes it really easy if that does happen to just get the person out and like keep flowing with the conversation too. Now you mentioned that you have the morning uh, slot and I'm assuming that's morning on the East Coast. When you're being strategic about your audience, maybe the time of day, uh, you know, sometimes you go to a clubhouse room and you're like, damn, there's like three that I would like to go to that are all happening at the same time. What do you suggest for your clients as far as strategy goes with the time of day, who your audience is and what else is going on on Clubhouse? Yeah, if you're going to create rooms, what is the mission of the room? You always have to, anything in business should be reverse engineered. So you start with the end in mind. What is the result that I'm hoping to achieve from my time here on Clubhouse? And then what what is the result that I'm hoping to achieve from running a room? And then what are the logistics around that that best help me fulfill that result, right? When I started, mine was really focused on consistency. I just wanted to show up consistently. And the only time of day that I could show up consistently was about seven o'clock in the morning. And here's the thing with networking, whether it's online or offline, getting in front of the same people repeatedly over a longer period of time is going to be what allows you to build a relationship. So again, go back to an in-person networking uh, situation. A lot of people love to hop networking events. I'm, I went to this one networking event, and then I went over to a completely different networking event, and then I went to another group, and then I went over here, and I networked so much. And I'm like, but none of the same people have seen you over time or repeatedly. Your time would much better be spent picking one or two groups and going to everything that they do over a period of time so that you build trust, relationships, and connections with the people who are there. It's the same thing with Clubhouse. Whether you're leading or you're participating, But usually at a certain time of day, all the same people are going to be on around that time. Not always, but for the most part, then you can add and you can expand and you can change around and you can play. But I think that if you're hopping on at 7 a.m. and then 10 p.m. and then 3 p.m. and then that can be okay, but you're not going to build the relationships because you're hopping in front of different audiences and different people as you would if it's like, can the same people see my name every day? Can the same people, and people are creatures of habit. What allows you to be consistent? What allows you to actually show up and do the thing that you're trying to do with ease so that you continue to do it repeatedly? The consistency will bring you to the next thing. I think the consistency should really be your most important thing whenever you're starting to use Clubhouse. Yeah, and it's all about that quality time with people, not the quantity of people that you're exactly. Are. Yeah, interacting with. Repurposing. You've been using Clubhouse in your podcast. Here's my secret. I think the power from Clubhouse really does come from getting a transcript of it and maybe like pulling out a piece from the room and going deeper on that piece on an episode of your podcast. If I'm having a huge conversation, but there's one point, that was a really good point. I want to now have a podcast episode that really goes deep on that one point. And maybe I just played that snippet from that recording as opposed to just sharing the same thing over and over. If that makes sense. Oh my God. There's value there. That is such a great idea. I love this idea of repurposing. You have a podcast. I have a podcast. We have all this content and then it's a matter of having time or somebody to repurpose it for us without getting too technical. So on Clubhouse, how easy it is to record a room. If you're up on stage, is there like a record button or how do you do it? It's super easy. It's super easy because it's built into if you're running the room or you're a moderator, I mean, you can set the room up as the organizer to record. It automatically records. When you're done, you'll be able to to go and download the recording. It pops up a little link. You can save it on your computer, save it on your phone, save it wherever. They make that really, really easy. Okay, that's great news because I've never actually tried that. So I want to- Oh yeah, it's super- Very, very, very easy. It's like once you have replays on, it stores the recording to your profile. You can just go down and click a button and it says download- like if you scroll to the bottom of your own profile, you'll see all the replays that you've appeared in. And you can, if, if it was your room, I don't think you can do it if you were just in somebody else's room, but, but you can click the three buttons and just download immediately right there. And oh, wow. That, yeah. And I love that idea of getting the transcript too. That is just, that's really great. Otter AI is great for transcribing anything, anytime you're talking anywhere. And so when you're leading a room, it can automatically just be transcribing it real time in in the moment. And then boom, you're going to have that 
transcript and you can decide what you want to do with it. But we're talking about like the example of taking one piece. It can be very tempting to just cut and paste all the same stuff on all the platforms. Instead, what I help my clients do to be efficient is figure out why am I using these platforms? To give you an example, let's say that my content this week is about, I don't know, converting sales calls. I The way I use Clubhouse is to have a converse, is to start that conversation with other people. Do you like sales calls? Do you not like sales calls? Tell me how you feel about them. Let's talk about them. What do you like? What do you not like? So it's more of a round table discussion. And then that moves to my podcast, which is like, if you want to feel better about sales calls, here are the tips to actually feel better about sales calls, right? Which then moves into my Facebook community. And my Facebook community is like, we might have a live Zoom where people are sharing their podcast tips. And then my newsletter is more like my personal story. Like here's a crappy sales call I had at the beginning. Here's how I felt about it. Here's what it almost did to me. But because I did the stuff that I I talked about my podcast this week, like I really started feeling better about sales calls. So I'm talking about the same Mm. thing, but I'm just doing it in different ways so that no matter where you are, you're getting the same conversation, but it's not the exact same thing. I've really learned why I'm using a platform. My Facebook group is for my community connection. The clubhouse room is to test ideas. The podcast is to teach. The newsletter is to be a personal moment, a personal connection for people who subscribe. So if you are at that stage, maybe have a purpose for each platform and it changes slightly the lens by which you're talking about your topic while still allowing you to talk about the same thing and repurpose from all the places into that other area. Yeah. You have so much knowledge and and insight. It's just amazing. Do you have any other words of wisdom for Clubhouse? Before you just start, what do you suggest as far as developing a strategy on Clubhouse? Yeah. So this is, again, one of those areas where I suggest things can happen in tandem. Like it doesn't have to be one than the other. So one is like, yes, you want a strategy. And the other is like, oh my God, just do anything. Just start doing something in Clubhouse. I don't care what it is. Like just do things, show up every day and do something. But as you're doing that, you can then figure out the strategy. So this is where a lot of entrepreneurs get hung up. I can't start Clubhouse until I have the perfect strategy, but it's only by starting Clubhouse that you will come up with the perfect strategy, right? People are like, oh, well, once I this, then I can that. It's like, no, no, only by doing that will you have this. It's always the opposite. And so you're going to be tempted after listening to something like this to be like, well, okay, that's it. I need to figure out my awareness strategy. I got to figure out all this stuff and what my messaging is going to be. And I got to like go and do it. So I can't get on Clubhouse yet. It's like, no, you can figure all of that out while you're on Clubhouse and while you're just playing around and while you're getting met, because that's the only, it's like when people look for their ideal client. Well, before I start marketing, before I start working with people, before I start, I need to know who my ideal client is. I'm like, no, no, it's only by marketing and working with all kinds of different clients and doing all kinds of different things that you're going to figure out who your ideal client is. So just start doing anything to get a client. I don't care what it is. So it's learning through doing, right? So I will say that One, tip one, just start doing it. That will start making all the clarity happen for you, right? But then the other is maybe reverse engineer just on a small scale. This will be a small scale strategy tip is I'm going on Clubhouse at this moment. What is my goal for going on Clubhouse? Do I want to make a connection with a potential collaborator? Do I want to showcase my credibility? Do I want to connect with somebody who could be a potential client? Am I just trying to learn a piece of information? And then, right, take the step that will help you get to that thing and make sure you get that thing. So the only real tip that I'll give is know what you want out of it each time that you go into it and so that you're sure that you walk away with it because how you show up on the platform may be different if you're trying to connect with a collaborator versus trying to get some information on podcasting versus trying to get in front of your target market. But know your purpose, be intentional about why you're going on, make sure you get that result, then just get dirty and play around with like the rest of it and everything will figure itself out. But of course, if you need a good business coach, you can always email me and call me and then I can help you. If you're like at that point, you're like, I'm doing that too, Rita, but I need something a little more like working like a well-oiled machine. Cool. Now I can help you out because you've done a lot of this like legwork yourself and you're going to know more to get you further than if you had done any of it at all. 
Yeah, and Clubhouse, you don't have to worry about makeup or anything. You just show up. There's nothing. They can't see you. So exactly. (laughs) That's why I can do. That's why I can do it at seven in the morning, Heather. Because nobody can see me. That's so funny. Are you like putting on mascara as you talk? (laughs) After, after I sit there in my pajamas, drinking my coffee while I do my room every morning. Thank you so much. Now tell people how they can work with you. I think that the best way, because I do work with people in a variety of ways. Every month I have a masterclass for free. So that's always going to be the best introduction to me. So you can go to readamamedoit.com, find out about my monthly masterclass, what the topic is, how to register for it. If you want information, DM me on Instagram. You can also go to readamamedoit.com and under work with me, you can kind of see the different programs. I have like a foundational program that's really good if you're trying to get consistent clients, generate consistent revenue and have those foundations really working like a well-oiled machine. And then I have a mastermind that is really for people who, who are ready to skip, like they're, the, everything is working like a well-oiled machine, but now their time is maxed out and they're not really at the revenue that they want to generate. So they need some help to scale to the next level. But the free masterclasses are the best introduction to me or my website, readingandyoudoit.com. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Rita. Thank you so much, Heather.